everyone, and good afternoon from the Rhapsody of the Seas cruise ship. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. In this video here, we're going to show you all around the Rhapsody of the Seas, everything this Crew Royal Caribbean cruise ship has to offer, from the bars to the drinks, the food, the beverages, activities, and more. It is the second oldest Royal Caribbean ship. Yes, if you're, thinking, if you're thinking you're booking like the Oasis of the Seas, this is not the small ship. Uh, easy to get around. Starting off here at the pool deck, a very functional pool deck. Mm -hmm. uh, one big pool, four hot tubs. I do like that they have the screen. I love how the hot tubs are shaded too. Yes, uh, the screen's used a lot during the day. It just plays kind of stuff like this, you know, shenanigans kind of TV. They will play movies out here in the evening. Um, we did, we're sailing on NFL Football Sunday and NFL Football Monday, and the games were on on the Jumbotron, which was really fun. No sound though. No sound, that's correct. Um, there's a giant pool bar. We'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. Uh, plenty of lounge chairs. Mm -hmm. And they will do some activities by the poolside area. There's a band that'll play out here. There's gonna be a belly flop competition later today. There was a deck party last night. Sexiest man competition. Yep. They had Bago. Yep, I came in fourth place out of 16. Mm -hmm. Not too shabby. All right, let's go check out the rest of the ship. In the pool area towards the back of the ship, some important uh, things like the self-serve ice cream machine. Open from no, I'm going, from 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Not 24 hours like on a lot of ships. There's also going to be a beverage station over here where you can get ice water as well as coffee. On the very back of the ship, up here on deck 10, you'll find the rock climbing wall, something you'll find on every single Royal Caribbean cruise ship. On a day at sea, you must get awesome views up there, though. Yeah, absolutely, with it being on the very, very back of the ship. Now, this will run certain hours during the day. I do like how one of the climbing holds is a panda. That's fun. And they'll be up. Yeah, it'll, it'll be on the times guide, which times of day they are running this attraction. On the Lido deck, you'll find the solarium area, which is a, a pretty nice. The greatest thing about this is it is adults only, 18 yes. plus, and there is a pool and two hot tubs in here. The pool is deep though. And it's not heated. So like we were in there the other day and it was, it was chilly. Yes. And it's, uh, I think, five feet, six inches. Yeah, so a little, little on the deep side. There is a bar over here in the solarium area, but there can be a lot of kids on the Royal Caribbean cruise ships. And if you want to get away from them, this is the spot to do it. And the roof is retractable. So sometimes they did open it up yep. on our cruise. There is a food venue here in the spa area. They'll serve sandwiches and pizzas. They'll be open for breakfast, lunch, and late night. My favorite thing is they've got these little roast beef sandwiches. Little rolls and au jus, and that is my favorite thing to eat right here. Another dining option here in the solarium area, there is a hot dog cart. But I guess during lunchtime or when the buffet is closed, they've got hot dogs, cheeseburgers, and hamburgers in this fun cart. If you make your way up to deck 10 and go to the front of the ship, this is where the uh, the walking or jogging trail is. Also, you can find shuffleboard. I do like with this being you know, a, so a smaller ship, you don't have the big giant windshields in the front. So you can just look out straight onto the ocean. I mean, it is, you know, four or five feet tall, but you're still gonna get those really great views looking out here. Also, if you're looking to like sunbathe in peace and quiet, this would be probably the best place to do so. Deck nine, right by the pool, they have a couple of games here. They have the Papa Shot basketball. Oh, you got one, look at that. One. Two in a row. Three. You're on a roll. They also have foosball here. And then uh, Connect Four. It's a really fun area. It's good use of space and good for things for small ones to do. Yes, yeah, more And adults as well. Ah. <laughs> right by the main pool, you'll also find a pair of ping pong tables. Deck nine, they also have the towel station that you can rent. Now you do want to return your towels because if you don't return your towels, it's $25 per towel. We are currently on deck four in the atrium area known as the Centrum. Now this is used a lot in the evening times. So there'll be live music that plays over here. They'll do some game shows over here. Uh, last night they had a silent disco. That was a lot of fun. They did. A um, couple other things in this area on deck four. You do have the next cruise booth. So if you want to book a cruise while on a cruise, you get some onboard credit. They do have that here. Behind me, there is a Royal Caribbean online area. So if you need to use a computer, or right, maybe, maybe your phone broke. Or... Yeah, need help with your Wi-Fi. Yep. And they do have some glass elevators as well. It definitely looks way more of a carnival 
older ship, yeah. in my personal opinion, than a Royal. The, so it's very different. Yeah, the glass elevators are important too because those will go all the way up to the nightclub on deck 11. So if you need to get to the nightclub, you've got to take those elevators or else you'll be walking up some stairs. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can't have a lobby area on a cruise ship without a lobby bar. And it's a really big lobby bar. Yeah, some of the bars on the ship are not overly large. This one, pretty good size. They're on the standard bar menu and uh, it'll run really long hours. On deck five in the atrium area is where you'll find some of the nuts and bolts of the cruise ship, the shore excursions desk, as well as guest services. At this moment, we're on deck six in the centrum area, which is home to Cafe Latitudes. Now this main purpose is the coffee shop on board, uh, not included with the cost of your cruise, but there's a couple things I do like over here. Uh, one, if you are on the beverage package, you can get drinks over here, including Powerade, I always find it easy to, uh, it's easier to beat the beverage package if you have some power at the end of the day and the start of the day. They've also got Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Now that will cost you some money, but we'll, what will be included with the cost of your cruise is these treats over here. And there's like pastries in the morning and then little snack cakes and sandwiches in the afternoon. Molly's currently eating a cookie. <laughs> and right next to that is also the art gallery on board. Um, they'll do all the, the normal Park West Art Gallery kind of stuff with uh, the art options. In the atrium area on deck six, there's a couple other nuts and bolts kind of operations on the cruise ship. You have the loyalty ambassador here. The desk will be open certain hours if you have any questions about your returning cruise status on the Crown and Anchor program. And this is also where you can find the photo gallery on board. So if you want to buy any of the pictures you took here, on board the Rhapsody of the Seas, this is where you could come and buy those. They also sell like GoPros and things like that. Yeah, we would definitely encourage you to do your research on those though. Make sure that the price on the ship is better than the price on Amazon. On deck six, just off the atrium, you'll find my favorite bar on board the Rhapsody of the Seas, which is the Schooner Bar. They have a really nice specialty cocktail menu in here. I'm drinking my favorite drink on the ship, a rum old fashioned. Molly is currently drinking a desert pear margarita. And it's kind of a nautical themed lounge. In the evening, this becomes the piano bar on board. They also had a violinist here. At the end. He was excellent. He that, was, that, was, that was my favorite musician I've seen on board the ship so far. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the drink menu in here, it's really nice. A lot of trivia games will happen here in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, in the early evenings. Yep, and uh, some Name That Tune games play in here as well. I also like the, the artwork. It's kind of like interesting sculpture things. And it tells you where we are. Mm -hmm. Yep, the map, the map channel is actually working. It was not working the other day. Um, expert word of advice, these couches, not comfortable. Those chairs, okay comfortable. Sit in the chairs. On decks five and six, in the very front of the ship, you'll find the Broadway Melodies Theater, which is the main show theater on board the Rhapsody of the Seas. Now it's a, you know, one of the smaller theaters you'll find, but it's also one of the smaller cruise ships you'll find. So I don't think you'll probably have a problem finding a spot. I do like that the um, the seats have cup holders and there's different seating. So it's all single seating on the lower level, but they kind of cuddle seating if you go on the upper level. Now on our three night cruise, we, there was three different shows in here. On night one, there was a welcome war comedian who was very funny. I, I really enjoyed that. Yes. It's kind of thing like I was kind of falling asleep. I had a long day, but I had a lot of fun with the comedian. Mm -hmm. On night two was pure country, a country music show. That was a lot of fun. It was. That was a good time. On night three, there's going to be a show called Ballroom Fever, so we'll see that later on this evening. And one thing I like about their theater, um, on days two and three of our cruise, in the afternoon, they use their main show theater as a movie theater, which I think is really, really smart. More like, cruises need to do that. Absolutely. And I would love for this cruise to do like, movies from like nine till right now. Like, I think that would be a good use of space. But here, that is it. That's the theater on board. Looking at all the way back of the ship, on deck six, you will find the Shall We Dance Lounge, which is, I think, the biggest lounge on board the ship. It is. It's a multi-purpose venue in here. Yeah, it's um, a lot of nights it's karaoke. Mm -hmm. um, there's also live music and dancing back here. Also, if you're just- They also do game shows. Tonight they'll have yeah. Battle of the Sexist and the Quest game show in here. Yep. Although, Bingo is in here mm -hmm. later today. They do have a lot of, uh, the only, I don't, one thing I don't like about the ship, a lot of the bars are very small. Like yes. this is a giant lounge and they will have roaming waiters, but then the bar itself is eight Very bar tiny. stools. Yeah, for a giant, giant A lounge of, that probably holds two, 200 people. Um, also over here, you could get some cool views out of the back of the ship. And if you are a Diamond member on Royal Caribbean, 
this is where they have the Diamond Lounge, which is in that back corner over there. In the back of the lounge is this, um, I, I, I couldn't even tell you what this is, but it, it's, a, it's a thing. Back to lunch. Also in the lounge, there's a large model of the Queen Mary, a traditional ocean liner. I believe it's permanently docked in Long Beach, California. On decks four and five in the back of the ship, you'll find the Edelweiss dining room, which is the main dining room on board. Now we have anytime dining, so we can dine between 6.45 and 9.30 p.m. here on deck five. We're gonna show you what dinner is like. And here's a look at that main dining room. And even with this one being one of the older ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, the main dining room is still very, very pretty. And here's the menu on night three. It's a taste of Italy night. Every night kind of has a like theme. Six different starters. Eight different main courses. Some of them repeat. It's like chicken breast and the strip steak will be there every night. Things you have to pay extra for. And desserts. Dinner service begins every night with a bread basket. A couple different types of bread. You also have butter. But our favorite of these right here, the soft cheese rolls. They did bring over a cheese plate. It looks very nice. We'll be in the middle. We'll be in the middle. The appetizer puts in the rice. Molly got the arancini. I got something I really enjoy. Beef carpaccio. And something I don't know if I like or not, but I wanted to give it a whirl. The crispy polenta. Main course has arrived. Molly got the lasagna. Which actually looks very fancy for lasagna. It does. And I went kind of basic. The New York strip steak medium rare. And I got a green peppercorn sauce coming. Dessert has arrived. Molly got the tiramisu. And I got a piping hot chocolate hazelnut cake to finish off our night here in the dining room. On deck 11, up at the top of the ship, you'll find the Viking Crown Lounge. I love the DJ booth. That yeah, up, awesome. okay, kind of a deck above everyone else. It's a rather small nightclub area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're only on a three night cruise. It was not used very often. No. Nah. Like last night, it was only open as a nightclub from like 1 a.m. till 2 a.m. They advertised pre recorded music, but we came up here and it was completely silent. Yes. Um, a couple good things though. Mm -hmm. This bar does open around four or so in the afternoon. So I'd like to come up from here around when the bar opens and then you get some really cool views. It's also a quiet bar too. Indeed. Um, also, if the Jumbotron has the football game on, good place to watch it while being, you know, temperature controlled. And the views are really cool. And those chairs, pretty comfortable. Yeah, those are really good chairs. A quick note, a small part of the nightclub area is the concierge club. So if you're staying up in a fancy concierge room, it's a private alcove for you. We are not. So we'll go back to the Viking Crown Lounge. It is a beautiful, beautiful November day as we're filming this here in Nassau, Bahamas as the police boat goes on by. And we're on deck five where they do have some big outdoor decks. Mm -hmm. Now this is gonna be where all your muster stations are. Um, if you're coming on the ship, they do the e-muster. So it's really, really simple. You just gotta watch a video on your app, listen to the horn whistle, come in, check in, boom, you're done real quick. And uh, I do like whenever cruise ships have decks like this, you come outside, get some fresh air, if you know, the, the motion's getting to you, the drink package is getting to you. Watching the sunset. Yeah. One of my favorite things. And it's uh, just a pretty, it's very wide as well, and you can have the, uh, the loungers to relax on. It's not a deck that goes all the way around the ship, though. No. Well, it doesn't go all the way to the front of the ship. The wraparound deck on deck five does go all the way to the back of the ship. So if you want to come and check out the views from the aft, you can do that over here. Now, today it's, um, well, seagulls and an industrial port and the lighthouse. On deck nine in the back of the ship is where you'll find the Vitality at Sea Spa. Now, Molly and I, were really not spa people when it comes to the cruise ships, but we did take the tour to check things out. Do recommend taking the spa tour. You do get entered in a raffle where you might be able to win some free stuff, which is always good. Now, the spa is pretty standard on the ship. There is a salon area where you could get your hair done, and there's plenty of rooms available for various treatments and massages as well. On deck 10 in the back of the ship, you'll find the gym on board. Now I uh, spent my time at the buffet and the bars, brought my gym clothes, and well, the only time I made it here was to film this bit. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Uh, very well air conditioned in here. I like the cool snake lights. That's a neat touch. But it's here if you want it. On Dick Pine, you'll find Casino Royale, which is the casino here on board the Rhapsody of the Seas. 
It is definitely a casino that's a bit on the smaller side, a bit more on the cramp side. Yes. Um, it is a smoking casino. My favorite feature of the casino is they randomly have one of these weird science museum balls. Yeah, like, the, <laughs> it seems like something kids would want to play with and it's strangely in your casino. But hey, that's fun. Yeah, right? that is fun. Very different. Yeah. Um, they do have some more interesting games like Keymaster, lots of slot machines. If you like slot machines, this is probably a good casino for you. I'm not the biggest of gambler. When I gamble, I like to gamble on sports, and uh, unfortunately, they don't have that on this ship. They do have a bar over here. Very comfy schools. Yes, there is. Also, if you're looking to watch some sports, there's not a lot of bars with TVs. I think this is the only one. Mm -hmm. So if the game's on and you want to watch it, it might be on the big screen up by the pool or here in the casino. casino bar, which could also be difficult because it is a smoking casino. Now, uh, Molly and I, we're, we're not smokers, so that would, again, turn me off from you know coming in here and playing some single jack, deck blackjack with a minimum of $15. I uh, did win $3, though. Yeah, the, you, generally, if you got a return cruiser here on Royal Caribbean, you do get some free play credit. They do have these games, which are my favorite. Those are things like video poker, uh, video blackjack, Moving along the casino area, more blackjack tables. I also don't mind playing some blackjack. Uh, roulette, you really can't go wrong with roulette. There's really no, no skill involved with that one. Cash crane, um, not one I would recommend playing, but kind of fun to watch other people play. Yes, <laughs> they're so determined. Mm -hmm. They do have a couple of the coin pushing games as well. A wheel of fortune slot machine. I did see some uh, three card poker, ultimate Texas Hold'em as well. And there we go, that is the casino. On deck nine in the front of the ship is where you'll find the Windjammer Buffet, which is the buffet on board the Rhapsody of the Seas. It is currently a port day, so let's go see what's for lunch. There's a beverage station in the buffet area. For lunch, it looks like lemonade, fruit punch, iced tea, strawberry kiwi, as well as some coffees and teas. Now, if you do have the beverage or soda package and you get the Coke Freestyle Cup, there is a machine up here. There's also a machine by the coffee bar on deck six. Well, the first station we get to is a cold station. There's a variety of cheeses a couple of different types of bread and some cold cuts. There's some cold salads over here, an egg spread, a salmon spread, and a tuna spread. We've got a build your own salad station, something I will probably be staying far, far away from. Lots of different options for different types of dressing. And then, um, man, I don't know, ensalada rusa. I don't know what that is. Tuna cedar salad. Found a good bread station. And these are some of my favorite things on a lot of Royal Caribbean ships. The garlic and cheese spiral. And then they also have the soft cheese rolls to serve you with dinner. This is some good stuff. Molly was hoping this would be here, and now she's very excited. I am. Interesting enough, right next to the bread is cookies. And then this is fun. For lunch today, there's a build your own Mongolian wok type station. And you can't have a meal on a cruise without dessert. For dessert, it looks like they've got a chocolate pudding, a cherry custard tart. Oh, I like this Oreo cake. I'm really excited about that. Some coffee cheesecake, an English trifle, and their traditional chocolate bar. Lunch, there's a selection of fruits. Pasta with marinara sauce, a quiche, a barley pilaf, cabbage, butter chicken, rice, dal, papadam. For lunch items, it's a lamb stew. Ooh, I love potato gras, and that, that looks good. I'm definitely, definitely gonna get some of that. Pan fried fish filet. Steamed carrots. Ooh, honey and garlic roasted chicken. All right. It's a selection of sliced fruit, mashed potatoes and gravy, and then a very interesting looking meatloaf with like egg in it. I have a buffet without uh, hamburgers and hot dogs, also mac and cheese, and french fries. Now we wait maybe less than a week removed from Thanksgiving, but here on the carving station today, it is roasted turkey and cranberry sauce. Good looking turkey. That was better looking than my turkey I made. And there we go. That'll be the buffet on board the Rhapsody of the Seas. 
Now we're at lunch on a port day, so it's not very busy right now. In the mornings, it's not a, the biggest buffet, so it gets very, very crowded, so much that there's a queue to get into the buffet area. So just uh, be aware, pack your patience if you want to come for breakfast time, but I'm going to enjoy this Mongolian walk. On deck 10 in the front of the ship, it's the kids area on board. You'll find Adventure Ocean, which is their kids club area. You'll also find the Royals Babies and Tots, which is the nursery on board. Now for children of all ages, quite like myself and Molly. You do love this arcade. Yeah, there's an arcade on board the ship. Let's see what kind of games they've got in here. Some pretty cool racing games, bike racing games. Candy Crush. Candy Crush. Blackout, Blackout's really fun. Winning yourself an Olaf. And then this is also where the team club would be on board. Win yourself a ducky. Now, unfortunately, all the arcade games, they do cost money. So if you wanted to play Super Bikes 2, it's $1.50. Which isn't a bad price. No, compared to other cruise lines, these are actually rather reasonable. I do love the cruise ships when they have the glass elevators that go up the atrium. And here's the view. There's the violin guys playing down there. There's very weird because you have a skylight in the roof. Yes. Okay, so it's kind of like a Wonka Vader. Now we're in the pool deck. On deck six, you'll find the shopping area on board. And they have kind of like three big stores. The first one, as you're coming from the centrum on the right, is going to be all duty free liquor. Um, very important, this store also has toiletries in it. Mm -hmm. So if you forgot something, you can pick it up in there. It's gonna be expensive though. Yeah. Don't forget it. One Don't thing, be asked one time. <laughs> yeah. One thing I've been surprised by on the ship, they have these tables out for sales, and some of them have really good prices on these sale items. Like you wanna buy this cool sun hat if you're really pale like me? 17 bucks. Yeah, that's not a bad price. Yeah. On the left over here is going to be the perfume store. Not really for me, but um, a lot of people do that kind of thing. More sale prices. The biggest store is going to be over here on the right, and this sells all of your Rhapsody of the Seas as well as Royal Caribbean logo gear. You're also going to get a a jewelry area in the back. Royal Caribbean does really good merchandise. I mean, look at some of the, like the hats, and the towel clips, and all sorts of stuff. Ship model. They do sell the cruise ship ornaments, something Molly and I try to buy on every single cruise. They did have one. We'll add it to our our shipmas tree back at home. Mm -hmm. Moving along as we continue on the shopping corridor, more discounted stuff, and then you've got more high value stuff over here like jewelry and lady purses. Uh, for a smaller ship, they do have a lot of shopping options. They do. We are currently on deck six, which is home to Chop's Grill, the upcharge steakhouse restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now in the evening time, I believe it's around 50 or $55 a person. We actually found a deal. It was open for lunch on embarkation day. After one of the sales that Royal Caribbean had, we got this for $16 for lunch. Let's go show you what lunch looks like. I'm really excited. And here's a look at the lunch menu. Four different appetizers. A bunch of different options, including a filet mignon. Excited for Greer cheese tater tots. And then a few desserts. The meal service does begin with some bread and butter. The appetizer course has arrived. I got the beef carpaccio, which is a dish I absolutely love. And Molly got a very fancy looking wild mushroom soup. And that main course has arrived. We both got the eight ounce filet mignon. Uh, they do serve a burgundy wine sauce on top. And the sides look really fun. French fries, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese. And those guys there, Briere cheese tater tots. The steak is just fantastic. It's amazing. And fancy lunch has to end with fancy dessert. Got the warm chocolate cake. And Molly got the red velvet. On deck six, you will find another upcharge restaurant. This is Giovanni's Table, the upcharge Italian restaurant on board. Now this one will come in a little bit cheaper than the steakhouse. I think you can normally find this one for around $40 or so. And you can get a filet mignon in here as well. Up on deck 12, you'll find Azumi, which is the sushi bar and Asian upcharge restaurant. There is some neat art on board the Rhapsody of the Seas. 
gonna show off some of our favorite things we've seen while walking around in this next segment. This one's right outside the main show theater. It's very interesting. Yeah. Some more art. This one's kind of like a pickle with a hole in it. This one's interesting. A fun looking cello. On deck four, right by the entrance to the dining room, there are some awards. These are generally given to ships whenever they sail into a port for the first time. And it's kind of cool to take a look at all the places this ship, seeing as it's one of the older ships out there, just how many places it's been. Molly, they say everything's bigger in Texas, and well, their first time ship visiting is definitely that. Yes. And this is the section of the Rhapsody of the Seas where Harry Potter would sleep. In between the coffee shop and the photo gallery on deck six, you'll find a small library on board with lots of books, but one book they don't have is, well, Experience the Point, third edition, the unofficial guidebook to Cedar Point, written by our own Andrew Hyde, autographed by the author. We're gonna take this book, we're gonna leave it here on the Rhapsody of the Sea so you can read about America's rock and roller coast back in the good year of 2007 when Top Thrill Dragster was still Top Thrill Dragster 1. Wrapping things up with our stateroom, we had an Ocean View Cabin 3042. Now, normally we always book interior, but I always keep an eye on the price of a cruise ship. So on this cruise here, after our final payment, the price of an Ocean View dropped below what we paid for an interior, so I got us upgraded. And it's a very functional cabin. Yeah, it's really big for an older ship. As a sailboat <laughs> floats on by, you got a pretty big bed, um, not the softest bed, Mm -hmm. Pillows are decent. We do have a couple pieces of art. And a couch. Along with a small couch and an end table. Now, one thing this stateroom cabin is missing, there is no mini fridge in here. A lot of them you will find with a mini fridge. There is a TV and it does get, you know, 20 channels or so. They were all working on the day on one. On certain days. Yeah. A lot of storage though. Yes. Lots and lots of storage. For our cruise, we're on three nights. So really they don't need that much storage, but uh, it, it's pretty good amount. Uh, one thing I did find weird, like Molly's suitcase did not fit underneath the bed. No, it's a giant suitcase though. Yeah, it is. Do a big closet. There is a safe up there if you want to use it. I'm just showing how old this ship is. I don't believe that's the current Royal Caribbean font. And this lady with the haircut of the times showing off how to put on a life jacket. Now the safe room was a little warm, so I yes. would recommend a fan. We brought our fan. Yeah, it that, was one of the best purchases I've ever made, and I bring it on every cruise ship now. Yeah, not that, all I need it on, but yep, better better to have it than to not. Yeah, and of course, everyone's favorite part of the cabin, the bathroom. Unfortunately, you do have the shower of curtain of doom. A uh, shower is pretty acceptable. One thing that was a little annoying: there was only one shower gel slash shampoo. I always feel kind of weird about that, but I had no no other problems really with the shower. The, uh, the toilet functioned well. It, it did not let us down throughout the entire cruise. Plenty of stuff, areas to put all your bathroom stuff over here, another big mirror. And let's finish it up with that terrifying cruise ship toilet noise. And there we go. That'll do it for our cruise on the Rhapsody of the Seas. A pretty nice three-night adventure, a little getaway. Some information about our cruise. On this three-night cruise, the cabin cost was $255 per person, so not too expensive of a cruise. And without, kind of like with any cruise or any sort of vacation, there's going to be parts you like more and parts you don't like more. Uh, Molly, what were some of your favorite parts of our cruise on the Rhapsody of the Seas? Well, the lunch at Chops, that was a really, really good filet. That was amazing. And the cheese tater tots, mm, great way to start the vacation. We also, that made us avoid like the Chaos Buffet. Really good deal. It was like $16 per person we paid for that. Um, so yeah, I agree. That was great. I really liked our, our server in the main dining room, Eduardo, who we had on nights two and three. One of the best main dining room servers I have ever had. And this was cruise, I think, 65 for us. He it was very, very, very good. Yes, he was very attentive and always asked uh, if we needed anything else, gave us information. Yeah, um, I did have a Caribbean pork entree on night two that was absolutely delicious. Really, really good. Speaking of some good food, uh, Mongolian wok on the buffet. That lunch was awesome. Oh, that was really, really good. One of my favorite things was the main theater. Uh, they played movies in the main theater, which never happens, and we always complain about it, that it's underutilized, but this time they did. The and comedian show was really good, 
And they also had a, a show called Pure Country, which you don't see country shows much. No, pretty solid. For the music on the ship, by far my favorite musician was the violinist. There was a guy that would play like kind of like electric violin tunes, and he was very talented. He was. He performed in the Centrum sometimes. He performed in the Schooner Bar sometimes. We made a, made a point to try and see him whenever he was performing. One thing I was shocked at is the great gin selection. Yes, I think so this probably flavors. I think this probably came from like this cruise did a lot of like European cruises. So they had like like six different flavors of gin. And that's not something you see a lot. So it was kind of fun, you know, if you have the beverage plan, you already paid for all your drinks. So might as well try some stuff that you would never want to pay, you know, that seven, eight, ten dollars a shot for. And uh, with that also um, there were no bar lines on the ship, which was really nice. And something that surprised me as some of those bars were pretty small. But uh, a lot of times we did not have to wait for drinks, which is really good. No, the pool bar and the lobby bar were massive, though. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, this ship went to Coco Cay. You have to love Coco Cay. It's one of the best destinations ever. And they made some improvements since the last time we've been there. Excited to go back. We're going back in March. and We're going to check out their no new adults-only beach as well. But yeah, that's one of my favorite places in the world. Also, from cruise ship Nuts and Bolts, they had a lot of elevators for the amount of people on the ship, and which led to the elevators not having to wait very long for them, and they were not too full. And they were functional. Yep. One of your favorite meals, which turned out to be one of mine, is the little beef sandwiches in Park Cafe. Oh, man, that's so good with the au jus. Fantastic. Uh, another staff shout out here, Freddie at the Schooner Bar, who was kind of our go-to bartender when he made me a lot of drinks on this cruise, and that was fantastic. A different shout out though, one of the bartenders at the lobby bar, I ordered a chocolate martini as my, my after dinner cocktail of choice, and he drew a doodle in it that kind of looked like Lisa Simpson. It was really cute. <laughs> and as a big fan of football, uh, the NFL was on the Jumbotron. So they had the games Sunday during NFL football, uh, Sunday night, Monday night, and that was cool. I, I really, really enjoyed that. But with the good comes some bad. And that is, this is one of the oldest ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, and you feel the age. You feel it's dated. And I feel like they haven't, like, taken areas and fixed them up as much as they should to bring it to, like, the modern standards. You know, you, you see all the water slides and all the crazy stuff. There is none of that on this cruise ship, and that's what you see on all the Royal Caribbean commercials. You know, there's no playmakers either. There's no, uh, there's no pub. So a lot of stuff you might expect on other Royal Caribbean ships you will not find on this one. Now, I knew that going in. But still, once you get there and they're like, oh, there's, you know, six bars on the entire ship and it's, you know, old and kind of clunky. It, um, it's just like, oh, why did I book this instead of something else? I think if you're booking this ship, you have to really like where it is going. Or maybe you just like the smaller ships. Maybe you, things like the Oasis classes are just too much for you with the giant walk from one side to the other. So maybe that might be your preferred thing. But for me, it, it felt old. I agree. My biggest pet peeve was the holes in the activity lineup. They kept changing the activities, and it's all a map, easy to change. But they kept changing it. They didn't make any announcements. And then there was things that got delayed or canceled. At one point, they had a band playing, and they kept saying, should they continue playing or playing karaoke? The room was exactly halfly split. Half the people were there to see the band. Half the people were there for the next activity. And they kept going, 20 minutes over. Yeah, it's also weird that um, I don't know why you change the lineup that much on your activities when there was no like change in itinerary. Like if you an island stop gets canceled, yes, that's why you would change activities. But when there's there no change, it was just weird. It was annoying. Then you have to continually look at your phone and be on your phone more than I would like to be while on vacation. I think for me, my least favorite part about the ship was the buffet. Um, it is small and it is chaotic. Man, it is... It is not a good place to be. It really is not. I would definitely recommend you eat breakfast in the main dining room. Uh, we went to breakfast at the buffet. We walked up there, giant queue to get in. And it was just like, oh, I don't want to do that. We ate at the breakfast buffet a different day, went to the omelet guy. He, we took our order and then told us it would be 35 minutes for omelets. Who on earth is waiting 35 minutes for an omelet? Not that us. is just crazy. Uh, for me, the nightclub was very underutilized, and this kind of goes back to the activity lineup. At one point, they said that they were going to be music in there. They only had one DJ, mm -hmm. so it was going to be pre-recorded music. There was no pre-recorded music. And it was like all lit up. It was weird. Yes, and the DJ didn't get there until 1 a.m. Yeah, it's, uh, the nightclub, It was if you're a nightclub person, this is not the cruise ship for you. Um, I, I had some good, really good food on this ship. The food I had on the main dining room in night one 
was not that. One of the worst meals I've ever had on a cruise ship. I had fried chicken with two pieces of fried chicken, and I had no idea which piece of the chicken they were. I think they might have been half a thigh. And then I had prime rib that tasted like a piece of plastic. It was gross. It was very I, soggy. I, I, I had stopped eating it because I thought I was going to get ill had I continued. They also did not have the best beer selection. I think Stella was the... They had Pauliner on, on day three. Yeah, but Stella was the most craft they got. Yeah, and it's, uh, if you're a beer selection, again, not for you. A um, couple other things. The ship got hot in places. Old ship, small ship, lots of windows, which is great for seeing the ocean. But, you know, you also got 1990s HVAC systems in there. And, oh, those, uh, you could feel it. Another thing, man, Royal Caribbean. This is our second Royal Caribbean cruise in, in about two months or so. They have a lot of kids on these ships. And this is not a ship with, like, lots of playgrounds and water slides. So there's times, like, we're sitting, you know, trying to enjoy a martini in the lobby, listening to some music, and there's kids, like, running across our table playing tag. Multiple times. Multiple sets of children, too. And they were jumping over furniture, bumping into tables. We moved because I don't want my $14 martini to get spilled. Yeah, and I, I didn't want it all over my clothes. It's just annoying, like... I, I guess, you know, that would probably vary cruise to cruise. And I don't think when you were on like that, the, before our sailing, it did like a 14-day transatlantic. Probably not a lot of kids on that one. But, man, there were more kids than I would like to see on this cruise. And, and they it, definitely didn't have much entertainment for the kids. No, no. Build a playground or something. Throw them all up there. Um, one com minor complaint for me to finish things up here is that uh, it, what I thought was weird, they would show the same movie on the Jumbotron twice in the same day. So the movie at 7 o'clock would then play again at 10 o'clock. And I'm wondering, like, who needs this? Who is going to see Maleficent, Miss, Miss, Mistress of Evil, twice in one night? Well, maybe... Twice! Maybe they didn't get to see the first viewing and they really wanted to watch the movie? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, but that will do it for our sailing on board the Rhapsody of the Seas. I want to say thank you guys for watching this video. The cruise ship trips are some of our favorite trips to take. And without people watching the videos like this, we would not be able to do so. If you've got any questions about the Rhapsody of the Seas or Royal Caribbean, cruising in general, uh, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And thank you very much for watching this video. Now, since drinks in the beverage package are some of my favorite things on Royal Caribbean ships, let's take a look at some of the beverage menus. There's not many on the Rhapsody of the Seas. The Schooner Bar has its own menu. Let's take a look at that. Now that beverage package, if you do buy it, uh, the prices do change. You have to buy it before it and you'll save money, but it'll include everything $14 or less. Uh, I love that rum old fashioned, that's my favorite. Toasted marshmallow old fashioned is interesting. Yes, it's very, very, uh, it, it's not as sweet as you think. No, would be. Um, I've seen a lot of people drinking the CNT and a lot of people drinking the lavender daiquiris as well. I really like the lavender daiquiris. And then you get some cocktails where it's just like, oh man, that's that's weird. Like uh, the peanut butter tropic, peanut I, butter whiskey with pineapple juice. Oh. I had that. It was very uh, unique tasting. Definitely not Ooh. my taste. I did the uh, the parrot punch the other day. That was pretty tasty. Uh, but I really like the menu in here. Here's a look at some of the cocktails on offer at the pool bar. Big fan of Planters Punch, Gourmet Smash, the Painkiller Rum Punch. Molly's got a Caribbean Mule on the way, and all these cocktails will run $14. Uh, pretty good selection here at a very, very large pool bar. Yeah, this bar is massive. Right now we're going to walk you through what that standard bar menu looks like. Now this will be the one in pretty much every single bar on the ship, with the exception of the pool bar and the schooner bar. Um, you got the taste of the Caribbean. Feel free to pause if you want to you know, look at it in more detail. I do like the, the rum punch they make, it's very good. Moving on, you get a little bit a little bit fancier stuff. I do, I really like that strawberry blonde drink. I know Molly, you had a pineapple guava sangria I yesterday. I like both of those, yes. Uh, the mintberry delight is good as well. I think I'm gonna mm -hmm. order that next. I had the Caribbean mule, that was good. Mm -hmm. Some final cocktails down here. That same rum old fashion I like from the schooner bars in here as well. Mm -hmm. And here's gonna be a list of some of the spirits they'll have. Now this will be what they should have. Uh, they might be out of some of them. They might have more. But this is kind of like what they should have as a standard. The core is always fun, especially for like after dinner. Zero proof cocktails. The soda brands they carry in here. Uh, the beers. Pretty, pretty 
get a standard beer list on yeah, this. Yeah, kind of disappointing of their mm -hmm. offerings of beer. I do like the uh, Polar Hefeweizen. It's yes. an excellent beer. But if you're like a craft beer fan like Molly and I are, it's not. It's not going to be the select, or the selection you're kind of looking for. And then of course there's going to be tons and tons of wines. And then some more of the brands of spirits. And there we go, that'd be the standard bar menu here aboard the Rhapsody of the Seas.